Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Many people likely assume that planes are made for the air, boats are made for the sea, and cars are made for the land. However, entities like the United States Army, as well as other nations, flip that idea on its head with the use of floating bridges. Floating bridges use floats or shallow draft boats to support the crossing of land vehicles, such as armored vehicles and tanks, across the water. What is known as the buoyancy of the supports, or the ability to float on water, limits how much weight the bridge can carry. One type of floating bridge is the M3 amphibious rig, which is a self-propelled floating bridge typically used for tanks and other vehicles, specifically to get them over various water obstacles. The M3 amphibious rig is self-deployed by road and can be connected to multiple rigs through the usage of ramps. These are typically carried on each vehicle and help to form a longer bridge. We are ensuring a wet gap crossing using amphibious rigs M3 to carry over the water um, national, German and multinational parts of the VJTF brigade using uh, ferry traffic. The M3 may be used in several different missions, including drills ahead of missions, such as Defender Europe. Defender Europe is an annual large-scale U.S. Army-led joint exercise with several different NATO nations participating. According to the U.S. Army site, the goal of the exercise is to build readiness and interoperability between U.S., NATO, and partner militaries. While a pontoon bridge typically refers to all forms of amphibious bridging systems that are created for temporary use, the M3 amphibious rig is a specific type of amphibious bridge made for frequent usage and longevity. Oftentimes, a pontoon bridge uses different types of shallow draft boats to form a bridge, while the M3 is a vehicle in itself. According to General Dynamics Europe Land Systems, the M3 is the world's most modern and fastest to deploy amphibious bridge and ferry system in terms of loading capacity, assembly time, and cross-country and in-water maneuverability. Though the M3 amphibious rig is excellent for moving large land vehicles over obstacles, there are certain times in which a pontoon bridge may be a better option. Oftentimes, these temporary bridges are used in civil emergencies or during the war. However, more permanent ones may be used in place of more expensive bridges to cross bodies of water. bridge over the Tigris River here uh, was destroyed by, a, by an IED a couple of weeks ago. They put in a, a support bridge over the existing gap in the infrastructure bridge, which is not suitable for civilian traffic, so we're building a road uh, down to the water's edge on both sides. 
A more recent example of pontoon bridge usage was in 2016, when Bravo 26 Cav crossed the Amman River with help from the 74th Multi-Role Bridging Company and Chinooks from the 6th Squadron, 6th Cavalry Regiment. In even more recent years, U.S. Army soldiers participated in a multinational operation to cross the Danube River as part of Sabre Guardian 2019. Taking place in Bulgaria, Hungary, and Romania, the operation involved more than 8,000 soldiers with the goal of improving the integration of multinational combat forces. U.S. soldiers, such as those with the 1st Battalion, 16th Infantry Regiment, 1st Armored Brigade Combat Team, and 1st Infantry Division, helped to cross the Danube River with a series of tanks. While the U.S. Army isn't known for its movement of troops on the water, there is a special branch of the armed forces that is. The United States Navy is considered by most to be the largest and most powerful Navy in the world. Among its elite forces is the Special Warfare Combatant Craft Crewman, who works in conjunction with Special Operations Forces. According to the U.S. Navy, the mission of the SWCC is the kind the Navy keeps quiet. As many missions involve classified locations and Navy SEAL extractions. These seamen are extensively trained for their duties, which typically involve reconnaissance missions in areas such as coastlines or rivers. While SEAL extractions are just one of many important jobs these crewmen are trained to do, they must also understand data extraction, operation and maintenance of various systems, direct raids against enemies, and integration with other U.S. forces. Like many positions in the armed forces, SWCC members must be ready to be deployed anywhere in the world and at any time of day, night, and weather condition. To be prepared for something like this, the crew members must undergo strict training. According to the U.S. Navy, SWCC operators have some of the most demanding physical and mental training and must volunteer any time during your enlistment prior to your 31st birthday. In addition, during boot camp, SWCC operators will have to undergo various examinations and screenings, water competency training, and crewman qualification training. During combat training, the Special Warfare Combatant Craft crewmen may be on patrol boats to work on their firing. Those such as the crewmen assigned to the Special Boat Team 22 are part of the Naval Special Warfare's only riverine unit. Their job is to organize, train, and equip the Naval Special Warfare Team with the ability to protect varying maritime environments, 
specifically Coastal and Riverine. Like other members of the SWCC, Special Boat Team 22 must also operate under any conditions in the day or nighttime. Another interesting U.S. Navy unit is one of only a handful of military units worldwide that operates hovercraft. Landing craft air cushion, or LCACs, are deployed to transport troops and equipment from ship to shore. First officially approved for production in 1987, LCACs are used specifically from amphibious well deck ships. These ships allow for not only usage, but also transportation of the LCAC. Typically operated with a crew of five members, a landing craft air cushion can carry about 60 tons of cargo and personnel at a speed of about 40 plus knots. These crafts are essential for transporting large vehicles, such as tanks, onto land. In addition, according to the U.S. Navy, they also provide excellent evacuation support, lane breaching, mine countermeasure operations, and marine and special warfare equipment delivery. Also an important vehicle for many Marines, the Assault Amphibious Vehicle, or AAV, is the main amphibious transport of the U.S. Marines. It is typically used by the U.S. Marine Corps Amphibious Assault Battalion to land surface assault elements and equipment. These vehicles are manufactured by BAE Systems and are fully tracked amphibious landing vehicles. They were originally introduced in 1984 and now have a reputation for their rugged durability and superior mobility for transporting troops and cargo from ships to shore, according to BAE. The company's signature Bigfoot tracks aid in this mobility, allowing it to traverse over a wide range of different terrain types at a top speed of 45 miles per hour. This includes plunging surfs of about 10 feet, whether heading to the shore or out to sea. In 2020, Marines with the 3rd Assault Amphibian Battalion 3rd Marine Division worked on an AAV during a regularly scheduled training exercise. In this instance, the Marines pulled the transmission from the vehicle to work on it while at Hokodayan training area in Hokkaido, Japan, as part of Northern Viper. The goal of Northern Viper is to work with Japanese allies in a bilateral, combined arms exercise and live fire training. Specifically, the idea is to test the capabilities of the U.S. Armed Forces and the Japanese Armed Forces' ability to work together. It was originally initiated in 2017 and is now a yearly exercise. Like many important amphibious watercraft, the assault amphibious vehicles must enter and leave the water by using the well deck of a boat.
A well deck is an exposed deck made for limiting the flow of water, as well as draining water. This allows for the deployment and recovery of various watercraft. U.S. Marines, like the ones with Battalion Landing Team 2nd Battalion, 4th Marines, and 31st Marines Expeditionary Unit, may be the ones in charge of various ship-to-shore missions, such as ones in Camp Schwab, Okinawa, Japan. According to the 31st Marine Expeditionary Unit, or MEU, they are the only continuously forward deployed MEU. Many of their missions involve the usage of assault amphibious vehicles. That's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.